My name is Leo Sobolski and it is my pleasure today to uh, interview Angela DeSmith. I walked into the station, into the clinic today and to do a fire inspection and you were here. So it's really a great time to interview you. Uh, your title is? I'm the Chief Operating Officer uh, for Northern Health for the Northeast Region. So that covers the geographical area of Fort Nelson all the way down to Chetwin and it includes Tumbler Ridge, Dawson Creek, Fort St. John and Hudson Hope. Wow, you have a lot of responsibility and Chetwin is unique with our clinic, is that correct? Yes, so uh, within the Northeast, we only have one Northern Health uh, primary care clinic, uh, which happens to be located here in Chetwin. Um, and what that means is that Northern Health Authority operates the clinic in terms of the staff work for us. Uh, we have a contract with the physicians to provide the medical services, where in all of the other communities within the Northeast, the physicians are private um, practitioners, which means they're private businessmen, and they solely run and manage their own clinics. Okay, what is the status now of the Chetwin Clinic and the Chetwin Hospital? So uh, the Chetwin Hospital um, is, we have not had to reduce any services. We have had um, some challenges with vacancies and um, as a result, the community may see agency nurses, which are contracted nurses that work throughout the province to support particularly smaller communities where they do have challenges with recruitment and retention. Um, but um, we, so lab and x-ray and respiratory, they're all running the same. Um, and the hospital, there is no intention of closing the, the Chetwin Hospital at all. Um, with the Chetwin Primary Care Clinic, um, we currently have uh, three full-time physicians and one part-time physician. And we have a fourth full-time physician coming in March. And from what I understand with talking with the physicians and the staff is that the access to physicians is um, improving all the time. As we get more physicians, um, when there's more physicians in the community and there, some are not on vacation, uh, then the access is even um, better. But we know that everybody needs to have a break from time to time. And so sometimes the access does go down um, during those short periods of time. Has the District of Chetwin taken a leadership role in assisting? Oh, totally. Um, if it wasn't for their uh, forward thinking that came out, Northern Health Authority engaged in a consultation with uh, the district, uh, Northern Health and community stakeholders to look at what were the services um, uh, required in Chetwin and where we could make some improvements and some adjustments. And um, the district of uh, Chetwin just took that on and saw that um, with the upcoming um, number of physicians that were going to leave, that they felt that it was imperative to stabilize uh, the physician manpower in Chetwin. And the way that they could do that was by building this new fantastic clinic and th there is twofold benefit. One is that we have the primary care clinic, which is where the physicians, and we do also have a full-time nurse practitioner as well, working within the clinic. But then also within this clinic, we were able to put all of our uh, community services. So um, nurses that provide public health functions, home care functions, mental health functions, they're all now working in the same building alongside with the physicians. So if they didn't do that, we'd still have um, somewhat of a disjointed, you know, because some of those services were up at the hospital and they weren't well connected to the physicians. So that, that, it's been very positive for all of us in, um, in terms of the actions that they've taken. One of the concerns that has been expressed is that uh, how can a local resident assist in the process of uh, retaining doctors? Is there anything that uh, a resident of Chapman could do that would improve mm -hmm. the retention of doctors? Do you have any ideas in terms of that? Because uh, I gather other communities are also in the same situation. Mm -hmm. Is there some way we can go a little bit extra to keep our doctors here and keep them happy? 
Well, one of the things um, that happened in Chetwin here was a couple community members had a, had a fabulous banquet and home-cooked meal invited the community um, members as well as the um, physicians and the nurse practitioner went in terms of the value of having them in the community. And I know that um, I spoke to the physicians and they just were overwhelmed and did not realize the impact that they were making on the community and having uh, medical services delivered locally. Um, and so I think it is just being um, um, open and receptive to them, acknowledging um, that there are times when they do need to leave the community for education or vacation. And that's actually what retains them, is, not, is having them feel that it's okay that they can leave the community from time to time for their own kind of work-life balance and, and not be felt that, oh, the community is going to be upset because they may not have the same access. Um, it's, you know, if there's um, opportunities that you have coming up, um, even just sharing them in terms of there's movie nights or there's um, activities or, um, you know, um, notifying them that they've started a new um, Nordic walking or Nordic cross country because um, a lot of the physicians that come to us and the other healthcare staff have lots of different interests and that's what we need to tap into are what are they interested in that will keep them here in our community. Yeah, that's interesting. Maybe I can interest them in Zumba dancing. Oh, there you go. Because I'm a very, very happy Zumba dancer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one of the concerns in the community, and I've been here for 40 years, is uh, the emergency room and the clinic and the time it takes to get an appointment. Could you comment about the use of the emergency room at the Chetwin General Hospital? Sure. Um, so in the past, with the old medical clinic, there was insufficient space um, for four physicians to work out of there. And so as a result, three physicians worked out of there and the physician that was on call would come up and work out of the emergency department. And so the community um, became accustomed to, particularly in the mornings, of going up to the hospital to the emergency department and seeing the physician there as compared to making an appointment at the clinic. Um, what that does is it takes nursing staff um, away from some other functions that they could be doing, um, supporting seniors in the multi-level care, working with the inpatients, recognizing that there are, um, for urgent and emergent care, that is the appropriate and the best place for them to go. Um, and so now that we have a larger space, um, the, uh, the district when they designed and built this clinic um, were uh, thoughtful enough to recognize that um, eventually the community would grow and that four physicians would not be sufficient physicians. And so we've got the space in terms of expanding to accommodate um, up to five physicians and the nurse practitioner within the clinic. And so um, the thing for the community to recognize is now um, that they can all work down here in the clinic is that even the on-call physician works down here um, because we do recognize that we need to increase increase the access and opportunity for um, the residents of Chetwin to have timely um, uh, physician visits within the office. So what happens now is during the clinic hours, Monday to Friday, if a patient presents to the emergency department and they're presenting with something that could be well managed down here, um, but they just didn't realize that they could get into the walk-in clinic, then the staff will call down here and say, we have a patient up here can we send them down they'll say yes because otherwise the patient has to leave the clinic here leave all the patients that are waiting that either are booked to see him or in the walk-in clinic to go up to the hospital to see one patient who may be um, having the same symptoms and condition that um, other people in the clinic. So it's just a, a better use of physician time as well of not having to go back and forth and they have their record here. Um, so the physician has an electronic medical um, record access here at the clinic which is different uh, than the one at the hospital. So they have more information when they see their doctor within the clinic. So the emergency room 
is really reserved for emergencies. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yes, yeah, for urgent and emergent um, services. And, um, and so we encourage uh, the community. There's also BC, um, uh, the Ministry of Health has also um, developed a, um, an 811 service where you can call. So if you live outside of Chetwin um, and you have to drive into Chetwin, you can call 811 and you can 24 seven and talk to a nurse or they also now can connect you up with a pharmacist or a dietitian if you have questions. And the service, the, um, the health uh, guide is on uh, the internet as well. And you can look up in terms of rashes or those types. Poison. Yeah, poison, those types of yep. conditions as well, so. Something that's very interesting is it's a new clinic, a new set of uh, procedures. Um, are there any new features here that the old clinic did not have? I think the big one is space. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one is the opportunity for the um, uh, primary care assistants to support the physicians more. So within the old clinic, um, if you recall, their um, office was in the same space as their exam room. There was a curtain that was pulled where now they can go from room to room and so the um, uh, primary care assistant can do things like their, your, the patient's vital signs, they can take their weight so that when they see the physician, and they'll enter that into the computer, and when the physician sees them, they'll have more information. So there's better flow so that patients aren't having to wait until the, the last patient regowns or dresses and then leaves for another patient to go into that room. One of the things I've just done a tour of the building is that you have counseling services here also. Mm. Yes. And how can a person utilize that sort of book in to see a counselor and uh, there's a variety of things that are uh, we're not in one location. How could a person see a counselor? Is it just a phone in? Yeah, so there's two ways. One is when they have their physicians visit, they can talk to them about that they're, they're feeling like they need some counseling services and the physician will then refer or um, talk to the mental health clinicians for counseling services or they can just call in to the clinic and um, uh, say, I'm not feeling myself, I'd like to have someone to talk to, and then they will be booked in for an appointment from there. Another situation is the nurse practitioner. Mm. Can you comment about that? Because that is different from the old clinic we had. Right. Um, so sometimes, as you know, with um, challenges come opportunities. So back in 2015, when we went down to one physician and, um, and had another one that was interested in coming and we were able to recruit him, um, it was an opportunity for us to say, what other type of health providers could help to support the community of Chetwin and the physicians and the medical staff until we're able to recruit sufficient physicians um, for this um, community. And so we hired an agency nurse practitioner um, because the physicians were a little bit hesitant about that because they had never worked with nurse practitioners before and other, pe other health providers within the community. And so we had um, a nurse practitioner um, contracted and there was overwhelming um, uh, appreciation for the expanded role from a registered nurse to what the uh, nurse practitioner can do. So nurse practitioners, they can order tests, they can review test results, they can manage test results, they can prescribe medic medications, so they can do a whole range of that. And so subsequently that um, demonstrated to Northern Health that there was a real role um, for nurse practitioners in the community of Chetwin. And so we ended up um, funding and put permanent funding into the community of Chetwin for a full-time nurse practitioner. And at every meeting I'm at with the physicians, they praise the, the, the fact that they have a nurse practitioner here that can um, sometimes also support them with the more complicated patients because she can spend sometimes the 20 minutes with them because they may be only able to spend 10 or 15 minutes with the patient because their numbers are larger. Now, Angela, it's something we've talked about nurse practitioners. Um, 
what is the future, like what is going to happen in the next four months, eight months, one year in terms of us um, recruiting doctors? Are, you mentioned that we're going to have one very soon, mm -hmm. but what is the process? Is the district involved, is Northern Health, to recruit them? Recruitment is really a big thing and we're in competition, correct, with every other small community and even medium-sized communities. Right. Yes, so recruitment is an ongoing process um, because as we know, we ha a number of the physicians that are within um, the practice in the clinic working in Chetwa now have return of service agreements. And so some people um, question a return of service in terms of, well, why are they only um, staying three years? If you recall the other physicians, they could up and leave at any time. They could come and leave within six months or a year where we now know that um, a number of the physicians that we have have a three-year commitment and that actually allows us to better recruit because we know when uh, a physician may decide to leave. That's not saying that they are going to leave and if the community um, embraces them and they feel welcome and this is a right fit for them and their family and, and those types of things, they can still stay well past the five years. Um, and so um, Northern Health Authority has worked with the physicians in terms of how many physicians do we think that Chetwin needs at any given time. And we're shooting for five because we feel with the amount of on-call and the work-life balance and having vacation and time with their family that five is a good number in terms of having in our community. One of the um, key things is that the district works um, right alongside of us. So when we're doing site visits, they um, introduce themselves, they show them around, they have a supper for them, and they showcase the community of Chetwin. And, um, and we line them up with a real estate agent to look at housing, whether they're interested in buying or renting, those types of things. Um, the other thing to note is that BC, um, particularly in rural provinces, um, was experiencing um, significant um, shortage of physicians. And that so through the Rural um, uh, Joint Standing Committee, they have now created and they fund what's called the PRA program. So it's a practice readiness a program. So when physicians are almost at the requirements uh, for Canada, they can apply and enter into the, this program and it's a th only a three-month program and that is where we're getting the bulk of our physicians now in both small and medium-sized communities. So two of the last um, uh, three hires are PRA candidates and the third one that is joining the clinic in March is a PRA candidate. And so that has really changed how we're able to actually um, have physicians working in communities. It's very, very positive. Now, one of the things that I've noticed is UNBC students, does Northern Health have a close relationship with UNBC? Because they're really graduating doctors, aren't they? Yes, yeah, so through the Northern Medical Program, um, Dawson Creek used to have a partnership and, um, and then because they had some physician shortages, they were no longer able to support that program. And so um, Fort St. John um, has the program for the Northeast and through that program um, we um, have uh, four third year medical clerks that come up so that they spend a whole year here and they get to see what the communities are. Um, they primarily work in Fort St. John or Dawson because they need to work in a larger center, but also through the Northern Medical Program, uh, we have uh, first and second year residents. So now it's a two year program and uh, they go all over. So they'll come and spend a month in Chetwin, which is where Dr. Bannis, uh, he was through that program, came and did a practicum here and said, I like this community. I want to stay in this community. And so we were able to recruit him after he graduated. And so some go to Tumblr Ridge. The, the key thing of that program is making sure that they go to each community within the Northeast and they support and they um, they just understand more about Northern BC and then we are able to tap into that. And they're here for two years. So we have a longer period of time in order to uh, work with them and encourage them to stay with us. 
it's a really important question, having been a teacher for 30, 30 plus years, is how can we encourage our local kids to go the one extra step to get their degree and then go on to med school? Do you have any suggestions about that? Um, we, we in Northern Health Authority believe in growing our own. We find that if we have kids or, or older individuals who decide to go back to school, um, um, from our communities, if they go off and uh, take that education, that they're more apt to both come back and return to our area as well as to work here for a long period of time. So there's multiple um, opportunities. There's some online programs um, in terms of um, healthcare um, um, lab tech or lab assistance. There's um, unit clerk courses. So what I would encourage them to do is either um, um, contact the Northern Health Authority Recruitment Office and if they're interested in a career or they can call me and say so what are the careers that I would have an opportunity getting a job and this is what I'd like to do. The Northern Health Recruitment Department is also trying to reach out to the schools and letting them know that um, Working in healthcare is not limited to six or even ten jobs. There are 40 jobs in healthcare, from um, housekeeping to home support to physios to nurses to doctors to lab to x-ray. And, um, and a lot of times people just don't understand or just don't know that there are, that it takes a large group of people in order to keep our system moving forward. Excellent. So uh, one of the dreams, and, and this is a really difficult situation um, of people in Chetwin, is they keep saying, will we ever have a maternity room back in Chetwin? Mm -hmm. It's a dream. Can you comment about that? Because it's a, it, it comes up all the time. Mm. Yes, and, and it's important for communities to be able to um, uh, have a, a well-rounded number of services. So um, with one of the new physicians that came to Chetwin, um, he had raised this in terms of um, what is the possibilities of low-risk maternity services being um, offered in Chetwin. And so we ended up arranging a telephone or a video conference with Haida Gwaii, because Haida Gwaii has a very successful uh, low-risk maternity, no surgical backup, and, um, and a couple of the key things that they talked about was that they, you need to have a minimum of four doctors who are prepared to deliver babies wow. um, because you need the on-call service. They also have a midwife on Haida Gwaii who does the majority of them um, and, um, and we have to do some pre-screening. And so at that time we only had two physicians. And um, so possibly um, when we get to five physicians, but the physicians themselves have to be comfortable because there is around 70 pregnant women a year that end up delivering um, either in Dawson Creek, Fort St. John or elsewhere because we track them by postal code in terms of where they're delivering. And, um, and, but it comes down to having a solid system so that, and, and that may only mean 20 of them actually deliver in Chetwin because they can only be low risk. Um, because we don't want to put anybody, uh, particularly when we have two um, patients there, uh, the, the newborn and the mother, at risk um, by offering a service um, that um, has to be of a quality and a stable service as well. So that vision could become a reality in the next couple of years? It, there, there is a lot of parts in there that need to be put in place. So I don't want to get people's hopes up because there may be physicians um, that say, I've never delivered babies and I don't feel comfortable delivering babies. And it would also mean that we would have to make sure that our nursing staff, um, if, we're having, if we're doing more um, services, making sure we have, um, we're working closely with the BC Ambulance in terms of, um, because they're now gonna be having to potentially transfer um, mothers um, towards the tail end of their delivery process as compared to they're already in a community where they're gonna deliver. And some of the things 
factors is is that Chetwin is an hour from um, Dawson Creek. So it, we've also had conversations with Fort Nelson. They're four and a half. And so um, some, you know, um, individuals may say, well, an hour is not that long because I regularly drive that and I'd sooner be well surrounded that if I need to go for surgical services because of complications, I have it right there and I don't have to worry about it. Well, this is really good. Well, you know what, Angela? I really appreciate it. <laughs> if uh, there are concerns in the community of Chetwin, how would a resident of Chetwin contact Northern Health? Would they call you? Uh, what, what's the process? So the first person is to, we like to manage them locally. Okay. So if it's a clinic um, concern that they have or even a compliment that they want to make and share with the staff, um, they can contact Lisa Johnson, who's the office coordinator um, for the clinic. And if it's anything to do with the healthcare services that Northern Health has is to call Peter Martin at the hospital. So he's the site uh, manager and um, he'll uh, take your um, comments and and he'll follow up on them and he'll get back to you if you'd like him to and and uh, we welcome hearing from anyone. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's been a yes, pleasure. Thank you. Shaking hands. <laughs> yeah.